My name is Delirium Trigger, and I skate for the Honky Tonk Heartbreakers, the Chainsaws, and the Texecutioners. So for skating posture, I have a few exercises to help strengthen several areas of your body that's gonna help you maintain an efficient skating posture, which is gonna be very important for every single thing you do in roller derby. So right off the bat, the first exercise that we're going to cover is a squat. Now, most people are familiar with um, a hinge squat or a low bar squat if you had a barbell and you were doing the squat in the gym. And that looks a little something like this. The squat that I want you to try, however, is called a high bar squat. So again, if you had a barbell in the gym, that bar would be a little higher on your back. With a high bar squat, Rather than pushing our hips back, we think about bringing our hips straight to the ground. And we want a more um, upright spine or back, so we're more upright. To reference your skating posture video, you saw that your trainer was probably a bit more upright holding the derby or the skating position rather than down here with the hips back. For your high bar squat, it's important to think of three areas in your body, your feet, your core, and your hamstrings. All right, so first thing that we're gonna talk about is how to engage your feet for your squat. It's gonna be important to be aware of your feet because engaging them a certain way is gonna allow you to be more stable, which also offers some safety, as well as some indirect engagement throughout your lower body. With my feet, I want to think of a couple things to help me create some tension through the feet, which will travel up through my legs, up into my glutes, my hips, and that's going to help me engage um, for my squat a little bit better. So I want you to think of three areas in your feet. So big toe, pinky, heels. What do we do with those areas? You're going to press down your big toe. You're going to press down your pinky toe and then you're gonna drive your heels down into the ground. So you have three points of contact in your feet right now. As you're doing that, the goal is to see if you feel a little bit of raise in your arch. Now the next thing you wanna do is create a little bit of tension through your feet. So after you have your three points pressed down, I want you to imagine that you're opening up the floor or you're twisting the floor open just a little bit with your feet. Again, from the side, three points, and then I twist. Now what that does is it further allows you to create stability, but you're gonna feel the muscles tighten up even more. And then it's also gonna allow your knees and your hips to open up properly. So here's a bit more of a view with my knees in there now, but my knees lightly open and then it also allows my hip to open. So I'm creating this little corkscrew, torque, tension, whatever word works for you, and that's gonna allow me to go down into my squat. It's also important because it's gonna protect my knees and keep me safe while I'm squatting. So it's gonna prevent my knees from buckling inwards or going too far outwards. So it's gonna keep me safe. All right, so on to the second area that we were talking about focusing on during your squat is gonna be your core. In the basics primer video, we learned how to engage your core as a whole, and now we're gonna put it into action. So we're going to use our squat. We talked about our feet a second ago, so have your feet ready to go with the grabbing the ground and giving it a twist, and then think about all the ways in which you've practiced bracing your core. We want to hold and engage that all the way down, all the way up through our squat. So if I'm here, I'm gonna think about my bracing. So remember, you have your Kegel, which you're drawing up through your pelvic muscles, your abs are engaged, your obliques, your lats, and your glutes. Twist in the floor with your feet. You're gonna bring yourself down. My back, my spine is staying upright. And then you're gonna come right back up. 
I can release for a second if I need to rest or if I need to breathe, or you can go back to back with your squat, staying engaged with your core the whole time. And then whatever your mobility range is, you can go even lower, you can go, you know, stay up a little higher if you need to. It's all very dependent on where your body is at. And there is absolutely nothing wrong with your knees going past your toes. Just make sure that your heels don't come up. Keep your feet planted onto the ground. We talked about the three components that you want to focus on for making a really good squat. So we're going to put those three components together and talk about that high bar version of the squat that we started with. So I'm in my stance again. Remember, I think about my feet. They're grabbing the floor, twisting. As I do that, my knees and my hips slightly open a bit. I think about my core. So I have my Kegel, my abs engage, my obliques, my glutes squeeze, my lats pull down, engage. And then I want to think about my hamstrings helping me get to the ground. So I start to lower myself. I'm still twisting the floor. My core is still braced while I'm doing this. And you go again as far down as your body and mobility allows you. The goal is once you get stronger at the squat and once your body becomes more mobile, you get as low as possible because increasing that range of motion is going to allow for more strength to be built. Now let's talk a little bit more about the hamstring in specific to how you feel it in your squat. So I'm getting ready again. I'm bracing through my feet, my core, and I'm bringing awareness to my hamstrings. So simply, I just want you to think about your hamstrings. Focus on the work happening here. Um, I'm a tactile person, so again, I like to touch the muscles that I'm going to be working. So I waken them up a little bit. I bring some mental awareness there. And one analogy that I always like to give my clients was imagine that there is a string tied to the floor and it is tied to your hamstring. And as you're lowering yourself, it's that string pulling you down. So you want to feel the sensation of your hamstring working like any other muscle in your body doing any other exercise. Um, if you normally feel your quads, imagine that feeling but coming into your hamstring. So again, my feet are engaged, my core is active, I've got that string pulling me down, so my hamstrings are contracted, they're doing work for me, and even as I push up, especially when I push up, I'm pushing the ground through my feet, but letting that work happen through the hamstring. So one more time, big brace. Everything is active, I'm engaged. Again, however low that your mobility allows you to go, and you build up from there. There's so many different ways that you can vary that squat. You can do regular body weight. Um, you say like you don't have any implements or any dumbbells or barbells at home. Body weight is great. Or if you are someone that has dumbbells, you can do all kinds of different variations. If you have a barbell, even better, that's great. But there shouldn't be any limit to what you could be able to do even with body weight. The hamstring is the muscle that runs from right below the glute to right above your knee. A lot of folks, um, I find, focus a lot on their quads. So the quad being the front of the thigh muscle from the hip down to above the knee. And the quads are definitely important, but think of this ratio. You use more uh, of your hamstring, like 70% to 30% of your quads as an athlete. So we want to strengthen your hamstrings a bit more than we want to focus on the quads. Uh, strength and power is what's going to come from your hamstrings. And it's also going to help to make sure that your body stays balanced because roller derby and cross training can sometimes unbalance your body and that doesn't feel good. So one of the things that you can do to become familiar with your hamstrings is a hamstring bridge. Now you might be familiar with floor bridges or glute bridges, which work on the glutes. So this is going to be a similar movement. You're just going to set up a little differently and you should start feeling your hamstrings. So you're going to lay on the ground. I'm completely flat on my back here. My lower back is pressed down, so I do a little hip movement there. And then my feet are flat. So if I was doing a regular glute bridge, my feet would more than likely stay right there. I would press up through my feet, squeezing my glutes. And I have the glute bridge, which I'm sure a lot of you have probably done. I'm going to scoot up a little bit. 
For the hamstring bridge, instead of my feet being close to my glutes, I'm gonna step them out a little bit further. And then I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna press my upper body down into the ground. I'm gonna push through my feet, squeeze my glutes as I go up. And you're probably gonna feel more of the hamstring now instead of the glute. And then I'm gonna come down, all with control. And I'm also making sure that my knees stay put here as I go up, as opposed to them coming in or going out wide. So if you do a few sets of those, should start to feel that muscle right here, and that'll let you know what your hamstring feels like. So I'm gonna show you a couple exercises, different variations on those exercises, and a combo to help you get stronger with your hip and your glute muscles. Glute maximus, everybody knows that one. Glute minimus and glute medius. And they're located in the side of the hip. So that's what we're gonna be focusing on. The first exercise is gonna be a glute bridge. Again, a lot of people I think are familiar with this one, but you're simply gonna set up flat on the ground. Your feet are just a few inches from your glutes and you're gonna press your upper body into the ground. You're gonna do your big core brace like we've been doing for the other exercises. As you push your upper body down, you push your feet down, your hips and glutes raise up, but you're squeezing your glutes the whole time. You're only going as high as you can. You don't wanna overextend through your lower back, so that means you don't wanna go there. You wanna keep this nice, flat, neutral line of your spine to your hips, and then you control and lower yourself down. And you can repeat those. For those, I would say do a set, uh, about three to four sets at about 15 reps each. Now, there's a movement that you can combine with it to hit those side muscles. It's gonna be your clamshells, but I'm gonna give you a more advanced version of the clamshell. You're gonna do it while you're in the air. So you go into your glute bridge again, and once you're at the top, you're going to push the knees in and out. The feet are staying flat, planted on the ground, and you're just moving in and out. Like a normal clamshell, which would be if you're on your side, and you're lifting up and down, just like that. Now, there's some variations on that movement. If you have a surface, um, I have a chair here, but if you have like a bench, a couch, something that you can lay your upper body on, you can do an elevated bridge, and then you can integrate the clamshell as well allows your hips to fully extend. So you'll notice as you squeeze, your hips can open up, extend as much as possible. Now to combine this with clamshell, you can hold at the top and you can go in and out just like before on the ground. I recommend on the bench to do three sets of glute bridges, 10 reps, and then do hold up in the clamshell and do 10 reps of the clamshell. Now, one way that you can add a little bit more challenge to it is if you have one of these hip bands. So these have become like pretty popular in fitness. What you would wanna do, so it's right above my knees, not on them, and do the same exact thing, whether you're on the ground or on the bench here. You're just gonna use that band for a little bit more added resistance. So I'm gonna do my bridges. Once I've done my 10, I'm going to hold at the top and I'm going to do 10 of the clamshells and that band is making me work a little bit more. For the lateral lunge, I'd recommend this one if you're looking to just strengthen the areas that you need for your crossover. Whereas when we talk about the Cossack squat, that's going to be a bit more mobility and strength. So if you're looking to increase your range of motion, that's the one that you'd want to work. So lateral lunge, most people I think are familiar with this one. You're gonna set up in a wide stance, just like this, and you're going to pick a side and you're gonna lunge. So that means that you're going to rotate out and then you're gonna sink down and you're gonna come right back up. You can stay on the same side and then switch sides for your other set. As you're going down, you don't want your foot to come off the ground here. This one can come off the ground a little bit. It's okay if you want to pivot on your heel. 
but you want to make sure that that foot stays flat. And with the knee, uh, again, you want it to track out maybe towards your pinky toe, but you don't want it to rotate in or go all the way out. So you're going to go down, big push and up. Remember your core is braced and you're definitely feeling or looking to feel your hamstring on this one. From the side here, I'm going to come to the left. Same thing, big brace. I want my hamstring to do some work there. And then big push up, using my hamstring to pull me down, using my hamstring to push me away. Now, let's talk Cossack squat, um, which is maybe a little uh, lesser known than a lateral lunge. The Cossack squat is a lunge, but you're gonna focus a bit more on the mobility to get you into that lunge while working on the strength of the muscles to do the work for you. So, it's gonna look similar. It's gonna be the same setup. I do wanna make sure that my toes are angled out a bit, maybe 30 degrees out. And here's where some of the mobility comes into play. This is me challenging my range of motion. I wanna see how low I can get without compromising my, uh, my setup and my brace. And I also wanna think about my mid back, that upright posture that we talked about for your skating posture. So there's a lot more things you're focusing on in here rather than just the lunge and the hamstring. So while I'm here, I do that big twist through the foot like I did in the squat video. I think about my hamstring, my core, and I wanna get as low as I can get and then push up and away without that foot coming off the ground. So similar to the other lunge, I don't want it to come off the ground, but I really am challenging my range of motion. At the same time, I'm keeping nice and upright here. I'm not leaning forwards or hinging forwards at the hips. So similar again to the squat video, I want my hips to go straight down as I go to the side. So again, I'm braced, I'm upright, trying to get as low as I can, and then big push from my foot and my hamstring to get me up. Here's your side view. So I'm here, coming to the left, getting as low as I can, and then pushing up. Now the last lunge that we're gonna talk about is gonna be a curtsy lunge. So this is gonna involve some crossing, which makes sense because we're talking about crossovers. So think about the same things you've done before. Um, for this one, I'm gonna move my back leg. So this is my planted leg. I'm gonna grip the floor, do that twist, my core is braced, and again, my hamstring's doing the work for me here. This leg's gonna come behind me, it's gonna find a point, and then I'm gonna go down into my lunge. Again, my upper body posture is upright. I'm lowering myself as low as I can, pushing through this foot to do the work to lift me up. So this foot, as it comes back, it's more just like my contact point, it's not pushing off the ground to lift me up. Rather, I want you to focus on this standing leg doing the work the whole time. So I'm coming back. I'm even getting a little focus on balance here, right? Because I'm in this uh, single footed position. I plant. Again, this is wherever your mobility is at. So if you can't touch your knee, that's okay. Only go as low as you comfortably can. From the other side or other view. This leg is loaded, that hamstring's doing the work, and it's pushing me up and away. Believe it or not, you don't have to only train cardio, like running, biking, rower, stuff like that, to get better at speed and endurance. Strengthening the muscles that are involved, particularly your core, is gonna allow you to be more effective at your skating, and it's gonna increase your speed and help you skate for longer. So the particular plank that I want you to focus on is called an RKC plank. And I feel like it's just gonna make you work a lot more than just a regular plank. So let's talk about what this is gonna look like. So you're gonna find yourself in a plank setup, just like any other plank if you're on your hands or your elbows. But this plank, you are gonna be on your elbows or your forearms. You're gonna lay out nice and long, and then we're gonna talk about some do's and don'ts. So, to get set up initially, my shoulder and elbows are in line, so they're right underneath each other, wherever my shoulder distance or length is at. And then I'm gonna kick my legs 
back and find myself in my plank position. So here's your do. You want to be nice and long all the way from your head down your feet. Try to avoid dipping your hips down or lifting them up like that. If you have someone with you that can look at your form and give you some feedback on if you're nice and long or if you're going up or down, that is awesome. If you don't have anyone but you have a recording device like your phone, just record you getting into that initial uh, position and then take a look at it. That's gonna help you right off the back so you don't condition or build the muscle memory to have a plank where your hips are high or low. You wanna set that standard right off the back because that's gonna help your lower back and it's gonna help the overall strength that you're trying to build. So once you're in your plank position, what makes the RKC a little bit different than other planks is you're gonna pull your elbows towards you. And that's gonna immediately fire up your entire body and your core. It's gonna work like 50 times harder than before. Now the key, I'm gonna get a little closer so you get a better view, is what does it mean when I say that you're gonna pull your elbows to you? Because that can mean two different things. What I want it to mean is similar to how we were creating the tension through your feet in the core video, where you're pressing down, you're rotating, but the foot isn't actually moving. So that's the same thing here. You're going to pull tension with the elbows, but if you notice, my arms didn't actually slide underneath me. So they're not doing this, they're just pulling tension. So that's your RKC plank. Um, for some people, that's gonna be really hard right off the back. When I first started doing that plank, it was super hard. So I don't really have a set amount of time to give you because everyone's different, but I would say shoot for 20 to 30 seconds. And if you can nail that with no problems, increase your time as you're going along. Uh, about three to four sets in your workout would be great. And then the last movement is going to be a push-up, but we are gonna work that push-up for your back rather than your chest and your shoulders. Your chest and shoulders are gonna get some of that work, but while you're doing the push-up, I want you to think about your back doing the work for you. You can do them on your knees, you can do them on your toes, um, but I would recommend starting off on your knees until you really get a feel of what it's like for your back to do the work, because that's tricky for some people. Now we're gonna apply what we did with the feet in the bracing video to here with the hands. So press down through all of your fingers and twist the floor with your wrist. As you twist the floor with your wrist, let your elbow twist and let your shoulder twist. So that rotation is gonna help pull down the lat muscles. So we talked about that in the bracing where we pull down and in and you're gonna feel that muscle engage. If you've been practicing your bracing like I recommended, you should probably by now start to really feel that lat muscle and what it feels like when it's engaged. So we're gonna do what's called a push-up negative, meaning we're only working on the downwards part of the push-up. So I'm pushing through my fingers, I have a big twist to the floor, my brace is on, very important to squeeze and tuck your hips here, and I'm lowering myself down with as much control as possible, and then coming up real easy, and that's gonna be your push-up negative. If that's feeling good and you can feel that lat doing the work, next level is gonna be doing a full push-up on the knees. So big brace again, twist through the hands, which is also helping keep your elbows in a nice locked position rather than letting them go all willy-nilly. Big twist, down, and then big push away. And my lats, again, are doing the majority of the work there with my brace. The progression for that, if you feel good and you can feel those lats working on the full push-up on the knees, then try a push-up negative on your toes and then try a full push-up on your toes as well. So you start here and you build up. I'd recommend doing three sets of the push-ups at about six to eight reps each, again, depending on your level. So mentioned it before and the trainer in the video, I'm sure talked to you about it, in that skate stance or that skate posture, you want your spine or your upper body to be a bit more upright rather than forwards and leaning over. And that's something that you can also train in your squat 
to help translate when you put your skates on. So this simple exercise is gonna help with that. Um, it may seem similar to the Superman exercise that you've probably done before, but it's a little bit more focused on your spinal mobility while incorporating strength as well. So it's gonna be called a T-spine lift. T-spine means thoracic spine. So that's like the biggest part of your spine and your back. So to do that, you're gonna lay flat on the ground, face down, and you can't really see it, but my feet and heels are together, my legs are staying together, and then you can put your arms right here, you put them out in front, really wherever feels good for you. I like to have them on the side. And then you're gonna go face down, and your forehead is gonna to touch the ground. Now, to set up the rest of your body, you want to squeeze your glutes and tuck your hips under. And just like any other exercise, you're gonna brace your core. So all the core bracing we've been practicing is great. So you're gonna use it for every single exercise you ever do. So you're gonna be face down, hips and glutes are on, my abs are on, and I wanna think about lifting just this part of my body with my neck in a neutral, so looking down position and I wanna hold. So from here, I'm gonna lift. I'm only going to about my mid back off the ground. I'm gonna move my hands so you can see. And I'm not lifting my lower back, so I'm not coming right here off the ground. I'm just lifting there. So I'm gonna hold, I'm still squeezing and contracting all my muscles, my core, and then you're gonna relax. You're gonna do that for about four to six sets and hold for about 10 to 15 seconds to begin with and increase that time while you're holding up off the ground as it gets stronger. 